Good afternoon. Thank you for all being here today. It's a momentous day for UCLA Athletics as we introduce Chip Kelly as our new head football coach. As you all know, bringing Chip here uh, today uh, came together very quickly, but that certainly is no indication that it was taken lightly. In fact, uh, quite the opposite uh, is true. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, everyone who was involved in this process. Uh, Chip, of course, Casey Wasserman, Troy Aikman, who's here with us uh, today, and Josh Repholz, our Senior Associate Athletic Director for External Relations. I'd like to recognize Casey, uh, Troy, and Josh for um, everything that they did to help make this thing happen, for the time and the energy that they put into this process. I value their, import, uh, their, their input and uh, really, really appreciate uh, the support that they provided uh, me throughout this entire process. You know, UCLA is a special place, as you well know. Reputation for innovation, uh, barrier breaking, and broad-based excellence. Uh, and certainly, winning is obviously a priority in many respects. But just as important is how we uh, interact with our student athletes and what we do from a professional development uh, aspect for them uh, as we try to mold them into young men and women uh, and uh, so that they can have productive lives after their time here at UCLA. Head coach uh, at UCLA must not only under understand this priority, he must share in it. You know, I held my current role as an athletic director at uh, UCLA when Chip was uh, the head football co coach at Oregon. Had the opportunity to uh, interact with him just a little bit, you know, during coaches' meetings and things of that nature, but ne never really got the opportunity to spend the sort of the in-depth time uh, that we were able to share uh, with each other during this process. Throughout our conversations, uh, it became very clear why Chip is such a successful coach uh, and why he's such a respected uh, man uh, in this profession. Beyond his record, he's sharp, he's meticulous, he's observant, laser focused. He does not miss a thing. Our, our student athletes will certainly find that out in time. He values the special responsibility that comes with coaching student athletes and giving them the support and resources to develop as people. Very, very important. He understands that the integrity is at the heart of everything that we do here and he values that as well alignment of vision clearly in that respect. And he recognizes that it's a, a privilege to coach here uh, at UCLA. Has a clear vision as to how to get our program to a winning championship program, something that we all desire. We spoke at length throughout the week about all of these things. And the interaction, through these interactions, obviously he left all of us very, very impressed. In the end, we knew that Chip was the right fit for UCLA because of the alignment of vision for all of those things. The desire to be excellent on the football field and certainly the desire to work with our young men and provide them with the tools to be successful later on in life. Future is bright for UCLA football and Chip is going to be the leader of this team, the leader of this program and will take us to new heights. So with that I'd like to officially welcome Chip Kelly as our new head football coach here at UCLA. Thank you very much. Not a lot going on in LA today, I can see from this crowd. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, Chancellor Block, Dan, Josh Rebholtz, Troy Aikman, Casey Wasserman, um, for just taking the time to sit and visit with me and, and, and them sharing their values and visions of what this place was all about, and then me sharing my values and visions of how I think a team is built. And to me, making a decision on where I was gonna go um, and I'll credit David Cutcliffe, who's a head coach at Duke for this. I spent time with Coach Cutcliffe this past spring when I got a chance to visit him. And um, if you don't know him, he's a very wise, wise man. There's a lot of intelligent people in the world, but there aren't a lot of wise people in the world. And I'll, I owe Cut because he talked to me all the time about his experiences, and he had been somewhere before and uh, got fired. And he said his year off was the best experience he ever had, and it's what you make of it. And then he said, just make sure when you come back that you find the right fit. And that was extremely important to me of um, where would I fit the best and what was the best situation for me because um, it's a great game and I love football and I'm very, very passionate about it. But um, to be aligned and be with the right people is the most important thing. And, and that's what I learned from him. Um, 
and when I talked to Chancellor Block and to Dan and to Josh and to Troy about it, um, it just made sense to me. And, and there's something special about this place. I had the opportunity when I was at Oregon to compete with this school and, and to all the schools in the Pac-12. And the fact that I get a chance to go back to the conference where uh, I kind of learned how to be a head coach, so to speak, um, there's so many great coaches in this league. There's so many great institutions in this conference. To be a part of it, again, is really, truly special. Um, and then if you're a coach, uh, the unofficial mentor of probably all coaches is, is uh, the great John Wooden. And, and I don't care if you coach basketball, you coach volleyball, you coach tennis, you coach football. I think every coach that's ever put on some shoes and grabbed a whistle and got out and tried to educate young men and women have learned from his pyramid of success. And to, to be at the same campus, um, where he affected so many people and still affects so many people is really truly an honor. And, and when you look at the history and the tradition of football, whether it's Red Sanders or Dick Vermeil, who's a great friend of mine and became a real good mentor of mine when I was in Philadelphia, to Terry Donahue, to Bob Toledo, there's been so many great coaches here. Um, I got an opportunity to know Carl Durrell, and I have great respect for him, and I know what, it, what, what he was like as a football player and coach here. Uh, Rick Neuheisel, who I talked to through this process, was very instrumental in helping me and un making me understand UCLA. Um, and I have great respect for Jim Moore. I coached for one year in the league with Jim. Um, and I think the ultimate compliment a, a, a coach can make is that Jim Moore is a football guy, and I have great respect for Jim um, if someone called me a football guy, I would take that as a compliment. And, and to come here after Jim and continue this journey for UCLA football uh, is a huge honor for me. And, and I'm very grateful uh, for Dan, for Chancellor Bach, for Troy, for Cordy, and for Josh for, uh, for bringing me here, showing me what this place is all about, um, and then hoping that I can take this and grow with it. Uh, as I met with the players today, I believe football is about three things. I think it's about relationships, friendships, and championships. Um, and you have to build relationships um, by being honest and open in your communication. You have to be competent in what you can, can do and, and transfer because education is about the transportation of knowledge. Um, and, and then through that relationship, trust is built. And high trusting teams are the teams that win. And, and when your team trusts each other and they can go out there and lay it on the line for each other because they know everybody to the right of them or to the left of them um, gets what it's all about. And, and I have great faith in that person. And, and that's my job is to turn this team into a trusting team that understands what it's all about. And through that trust and relationships, it grows into friendships and in lifelong friendships. The, those players are going to find their best friends in, in that locker room and people that are, are going to be there for them for the rest of their lives. And then hopefully through that process of relationships and friendships, that leads to championships. And, and that's what this place is all about. When, when you combine the number one public academic school in the country with 113 national championships. There's broad brace excellence at, at UCLA, and I'm really, really humbled to be a part of it. So thank you for that, and I think we'll open it up to questions. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Um, we have these two pass mics, so please wait for the mic and make sure to introduce yourself. That's also the longest I've talked in my life, so. <laughs> Uh, ben, over here, uh, Ben Bolch, Los Angeles Times. Um, Coach Kelly, can you talk about how the college game has changed since you last coached in it and uh, how teams may have adapted to the style of offense that you like and, and whether you think you have to counter those uh, adaptations that have been made in the game? Yeah, it really has changed in the last five years. Um, you know, and it's, it's something I really think there's a trickle-up effect that's going on in football. I even think what happens on Sundays now um, has been effective what – High school coaches have been doing on Friday nights. College coaches started doing on Saturday. And now NFL teams are doing on Sunday. But um, I still think the game of football comes down to fundamentals. You know, and, and can you block? Can you tackle? Um, can you catch? Can you make cuts? Can you do that? Um, there's always going to be great schemes out there. And I think it's a coach's responsibility to fit the scheme to the personnel that he has. Um, and that's always the challenge. And I think the coaches that are the best, um, you know, Really what they do is they make the simple seem complex to their opponents, but they make the complex seem very simple uh, to their own team. So, Coach, right here in the center, Jim Hill, CBS2 and KKL9, congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Uh, one would assume that your top priority right now would be to talk and have a conversation with Josh Rosen to find out how he feels. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering, when you talk to him or if you have talked to him, what would you tell him about going to the next level and if you think he's ready or not? 
Well, I, I don't know Josh very well. I had a team meeting this morning at 8.30, and then I got a chance to visit with him for a couple of minutes afterwards. Um, I've got a chance to see him on film, and he's a tremendous football player. Um, but I think Josh Rosen, as I would advise any player, just like I did when I was at Oregon, is that our job is to compile all the information for you and then help you make an educated decision on what's the best decision for Josh Rosen. Hi, Coach. Ted Sobel, Sports USA. Welcome to L.A. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions in regarding your being originally from New Hampshire, the little kid in you thinking, how did you ever end up in L.A. from this mm -hmm. long road to get here and what mm -hmm. you would have thought at the time? And also, is there a hockey connection between you and Los Angeles? Uh, did you ever skate at the JFK Coliseum in Manchester? Do you remember that? Because that's where the Kings farm team used to be. Yeah, they were there. I did grow up playing hockey and then... Uh, they were the farm team for the Kings, so um, I don't think when I was a hockey player at the JFK Coliseum that uh, my lifelong goal was Chippy goes to Hollywood. So um, <laughs> I just enjoyed playing hockey. So do you remember a team? The, New the Hampshire fact that you bridged that gap to get me from the JFK Coliseum to, to LA, that, that you deserve a lot of credit do for you, that. Do you remember a team, the New Hampshire Freedoms, there, in when you were about 14 or 15? <coughs> sure. Minor league team, you do. <laughs> no, you don't. Do no, you? I. I do. They, were the, they had the Monarchs or Freedoms. They had a lot of teams right. there. And it was, I was uh, their announcer when you were 15. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Okay. Hope you came to our game. I, I knew there was a method to the exactly. Vegas. Chip, Kurt Sandoval from ABC7. Again, welcome. You talked about making sure it was the right fit in that time off and mm -hmm. spending time with the coach from Duke. In this process with Dan Guerrero or Troy Aikman, what in this process did you know this was or is the right fit? Um, I, I think if you've been around long enough, you can trust your gut, uh, and, and maybe it, it makes you go back and look at your values and vision, and do they match? And then I think I was fortunate that I didn't have to take a job, um, but if I was going to take a job, it was going to be the right job, you know. And I think sometimes um, your hubris can can probably get the best of you and just say, "Well, I'll go there and I'll just change everything," you know. Where sometimes it's a lot easier when. Uh, everybody's already rowing the boat in the right direction. And when I met Dan and, and talked to Josh and, and Chancellor Block about um, their values and visions of this place, it, it, uh, we were aligned. So I thought, I thought that was really important for me. Uh, Dennis Freeman, news for us online. Dot com. Um, coach, um, your offense that you ran in Oregon, can we expect that same type of offense here at UCLA? Now those players have all graduated. So... <laughs> I, I talked to LaMichael and some of those guys, but now we're, we're not. So um, I think anything you do, in what, what, whatever scheme you run, has to be tailored to the personnel you have. I think you can have a vision of what you're going to recruit to, and this is what we'll, you know, we're looking to get to. But I, I think you really have to evaluate, you know, we're going to play and we're going to open up next year, and, and um, we're not going to say, hey, you know, in two or three years when we get our guys in here. I, I met with my guys today. You know, and I'm excited about those guys that are currently part of this program. Um, you know, and I told them, I said, it, it, it's amazing how resilient young people are. I mean, uh, uh, last Sunday they, they lost their coach. And then on a short week they, they turned it around, and on Friday night they qualified to play in a bowl game. You know, and, I, and, and that, that showed me a lot about the, the character of the current players on this team and what I, I can do at least from a short-term um, process of this whole thing is is make sure the next 30 days are the best 30 days of their lives because they deserve to go to a bowl game they earned it they deserve to go finish this off the right way and as i told them today great teams finish um jed fish has a great plan in place jed will coach the team through the bowl game um i'm not going to be a part of that um but if i'm, I'm there to assist in any way if i can help those guys but um especially those seniors because i won't get an opportunity to coach them but they deserve to go out the right way and i know that this place will do um, right by them in terms of what they're going to do and where they're going to go and what their bowl experience will be like. But um, that just goes to the values and vision that we talked about when, when I was with Dan is that we, we all have to remember that um, the student athlete experience is the main thing and we always have to remember to let's keep the main thing the main thing. So that's what I really hope for this group going forward. Um, and in terms of offense, we'll, we'll figure it out when we get, get a chance to get together with our guys during the second semester here. Uh, coach right here. Steve Finley, Culver City News, Culver City Observer. Mm -hmm. um, we all know you're a great offensive coach, but mm -hmm. what about defense? Mm -hmm. And the second question, can you bring in another DeAnthony Thomas to help us? <laughs> well, first off, he's just a special young man, and I was fortunate to, to spend two years with, with uh, DeAnthony. Um, and, and then, obviously, defense. I think 
um, you know, offense probably gets a lot of the the publicity, so to speak, and you know, maybe that's the sexy thing out there. But defense wins championships, and and when we were successful at Oregon, and and we were winning Pac-12 championships, it was because of our defense. I don't think the, they got enough credit. But you look at the guys that are still playing outstanding in the NFL, the Deion Jordans and and the. Um, Kiko Alonzo's and the Terrence Mitchell's and the Avery Patterson's and the, the list goes on and on. There were some great players on our defenses at Oregon. Um, whether people you chose to talk about them um, one way or another, I don't think we control that narrative. But um, I know for for this team to be successful is we have to play great defense. And, and that's that's got to be the foundation of when you build your football team. Coach, over here to you right here. Hey. Could I ask you, during this one year, Gap, your sabbatical. gap year, I guess. Uh, we call it a sabbatical. Sabbatical. What, what did you learn maybe about yourself? Was there a bit of introspection going on because uh, you didn't have football every day, every minute, every hour? And also, I actually did, but no one paid attention to me. But <laughs> what, what did you learn about yourself? Um, I, I had a really good experience. You know, I've talked to our players all the time. I think uh, for you to grow as a person, you have to get out of your comfort zone. So, um, I got out of my comfort zone by joining the media. So, um, and it was an enlightening experience. You know, you know my experience at ESPN uh, and working with people like Chris Cotter and Jonathan Vilma, um, Kevin Nagandi, um, and, and then what we did on Saturdays and watch games with people like Mac Brown and I could spend time picking Mac Brown's brain and I know how successful he is and how much I revered Mac as a coach and then as a broadcaster how Mac had worked at it and he was kind of the veteran that kind of mentored me a little bit in that and then with Booger McFarland and Joey Galloway and Jesse Palmer and Adnan Verk, we, we had a blast and, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it also kept me in the game. You know, I think uh, I have great respect for people in the media in terms of the, the great ones, and Troy's one of the best that's, that's ever done it. You know, the Chris Collinsworth, who I, I spent time with Chris Collinsworth, of studying, you know, how to articulate what's going on in a football game, and I think it, it puts things in perspective for you. But it also gave me the ability to watch a ton of college tape, to study a ton of NFL tape, um, and still keep my hand in the game, even though I wasn't coaching on a daily basis. I was still studying football, researching football, talking about football. So. And also expectations, always a question when a new coach comes in. What are the mm -hmm. realistic expectations the fervent fans and donors should have about this program? Well, I think the only expectation you can have is, is just what people do on a daily basis. You know, obviously, um, if people could predict the game of football, then, you know, it, it really wouldn't be as fun as it, as it is. It's, a, it's an unbelievable game that I think turns on a dime at a lot of different times. But, you know, our job is to prepare them the best they can possibly play, um, create an environment where your players have an opportunity to be successful, and then get out of the way and let them go play. So, you know, our job is to, is to really work as hard as we can as a coaching staff to prepare them for each opportunity we get. You know, I, I believe our role is no different than a professor. Um, our exam happens to be every Saturday, you know, and they know the syllabus before the, you know, before the season starts. They know how many um, tests that we're going to have. The only difference, I think, between the guys that we have and the, the common student here is that 90,000 people aren't going to watch them take that test. You know, 90,000 people are going to watch them take a test. But, um, you know, it's, it's just our job is to make sure that we prepare them and create that environment where they have an opportunity to be successful. Chip over here. Uh Hi. Kyle Boniger from ESPN. Sure. Uh, when, you, when you look at the Pac-12 now compared to what it was mm -hmm. when you left, how, is it, how do you think it's changed? Well, I, there's obviously, and, and you never think about it, but when I was there, I think it was five years ago, that just the coaching changes, you know, of who's where and, and which coaches that I faced when I was at Oregon and then they're, they're, they're no longer here. But I think, um, obviously, I think the job Chris Peterson has done at Washington, uh, you know, is really something that no matter where you are, you take a look at what he's done. You know, there's obviously been a change at Oregon. Uh, David Shaw is a constant and will always be a really, really good football team because of the type of coach, the type of person that David is. Um, and then obviously there's a change going on in Arizona State right now. Rich Rodriguez has been on the cutting edge of football. Um, Clay's done an unbelievable job right across the – credit across the city. So I, I think that the level of coaching, some of the coaches and the faces are a little bit different, but you know, it's still, it's going to be a battle each, each week. And, and you can never look at, well, we want to try to compare ourselves to this people or those people. I've never been a comparison person. Um, Teddy Roosevelt said comparison is the thief of uh, the stealing your joy. So it's not worried about that. What we really want to look at is, is how are we going to get better every single day and, and how do we compete with ourselves? and we can do that, then we're going to get tested every single Saturday we play against the people in this league. And then uh, how quickly do you expect to fill your staff, and is there any 
explanation for how that process is going to work for you? Uh, yeah, very simple. There was a great coach that once said, be quick, but don't hurry. And uh, that's really the philosophy that we're going we're to follow is that we obviously need to, to get a staff in place. Um, and I've talked to um, everyone except for two of the guys on the current staff. Guys are out on the road right now, and I'm going to sit down with everybody here. And then, um, But we're going to be deliberate and make sure that we get people, just like the process I went through with Dan, that, that are the right fit uh, for UCLA. Uh, ben Bolch with the LA Times again. Uh, how would you compare, I, I know you just got here, but the infrastructure here and what you've seen so far versus what existed at Oregon? Com as far as facilities, oh, uh, things okay. like that. I got you. I don't have an engineering degree, so, um, you know, I, I think this is unique, this setup here. Um, the fact that the Washburn building has just been built and it's a state-of-the-art facility um, to have your two practice fields right there in the middle of campus. Poly, if you look out my office, Poly Pavilion is to your left, and then um, the Luskin Conference Center and Hotel is right at the other end of it. Um, I'd like to be able to just stay in the Luskin. I've heard it, it's expensive to live here, so if we could work out a deal where I could just stay in the Luskin Center, <laughs> it would be great. I mean, we could put Luskin on our backs on the sideline or something. Um, so we, when you talk about a football setup, when you have a hotel, a practice field, and an office all within like 200 yards, I, I think it's the best in the country. Coach, uh, Matt Joy, 247 Sports. Um, you said you got to talk to all but two of the coaches on staff. And mm -hmm. you said J I've that talked to them. I just haven't met them face-to-face. -face. So the other okay. two I didn't talk to, we talked over the phone, and we're supposed to meet today. So. I got it. Um, and you said Jed Fish has a great plan in place. Mm -hmm. How much do you know about Jed's offenses of past years? How much have you gotten to talk with him about offense before? And can you describe that relationship? Yeah, I've known Jed for a while, back to when he was the offensive coordinator at Miami and I was at Oregon. So um, one of the unique things about the college and the professional coaching community is is if, uh, if you don't know that person personally, then, you know, then someone you have coached with has worked with that person. So um, I've got great respect for Jed. I thought he's done, I thought he's done a, uh, an unbelievable job every stop he's had in his career um, and really needs to be commended on what he did last week with this football team, you know, to take them from where they were on Sunday on a short week and then to get them to be bowl eligible. Um, you know, he w was an outstanding job by him. So um, we spent a lot of time yesterday um, just talking and him outlining his – vision for what he thinks this next 30 days should look like. And as I told him, I'm just here to support him from that standpoint. Chip, hi, Liz Habib from Fox hi, in Los Angeles here, Fox 11. When you left college and you were at Philadelphia, you left under the cloud of NCAA penalties. Mm -hmm. So as you come back into college, and Dan specifically mentioned integrity, mm -hmm. what do you know now? How have you changed now that you can be assured you will bring the integrity to UCLA that the NCAA demands? Sure. Um, you know, I first, I take full responsibility for what happened. It happened under my watch, and I'm responsible for that. Um, I've met with Dan. I've met with Matt Bernstein and, and uh, Jen Vina-Smith in, in compliance, and then we have a plan moving forward of um, how we would recruit, how we're going to move forward, how they will interact with us and, and rely on them to ask them is, is, is how does the process work, how are we doing things, and are we using recruiting services in the right manner? Edward Lewis, Rivals .com. Uh, along those lines of recruiting, how is that all going to work this upcoming month with uh, a new st or your staff and then the new staff currently in place? And, and can you recruit at the same time as Jed recruits? I mean, how, how's that all going to work this final kind of month? Before? Well, you have 10 people that can be on the road. So you, you just, um, you know, we'll try to finalize. Like I said, be quick, but don't hurry, but designate who, who's going to be out on the road. The current assistants were, have been out um, and will be out for the next couple of days contacting um, all the people that they've have contacted in the past. And then we will get a chance, hopefully, by the end of the week, beginning of next week, start to finalize exactly who will be out. There's really three phases to um, recruiting right now. There's uh, contacts, and you can have one a week. There's uh, first week, second week, third week. So um, hopefully we'll have at least a few guys in place so that we can um, hit the ground on, on the second week and the third week before that uh, December signing date. Coach, uh, Ted Sobel, Sports USA, one more time. Hockey guy. In, yeah, exactly. In the building. <laughs> Yeah. That the guy who said, be quick, but don't hurry. Yeah. What's that like inside knowing the tradition of this place and following a man like that? And uh, did you learn anything from your NFL days that you could take back to college? Well, you know, one of the things about, and, and I think first from Coach Wooden is just, you know, uh, 
the pyramid of success, and I think the the, the wooden leadership academy is, and what they've instituted here is is just you know continues that, and that's something that I think um, that attracted me here about the development of the student athlete, not only on the field but off the field, and and how important that Dan and the people in the athletic department think of it. Um, and then from the NFL, I think you know you are on the cutting edge of X's and O's, and um, you're not only coaching the best athletes in in the world, you're you're competing with coaches who are the best in the world, and so. Um, you know, whether it's Bill Belichick or Tom Coughlin or Andy Reid or whoever, um, you know, you get a chance on a weekly basis and, and uh, um, you play people twice. So, you, you know, your game plans are entirely different the second time compared to the first time. But um, I think the, the NFL game, um, a little bit different than the college game, is 54% of the NFL games are seven points or less, 24% are three points or less. So situational football at the NFL is, is almost everything that you do. You know, college is a little bit different. I think it's about 30 and 14. So there's not as many two-minute drives um, in college football. There are in every single NFL game. You know, if you want to talk about how to study the game, just watch the Red Zone channel, and, and you're watching situational football at its finest. So I think that experience of, you know, my time in the NFL from a, learning even really more the nuances about the situational game, um, I hope will carry over when I come back to college. So thank you.